live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, Jeff Kelly and Jeff Frick. Hi, welcome back everyone. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are at the Splunk.conf 2014, the fifth annual Splunk user conference at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we've gone two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Uh, John Furrier was here yesterday. Jeff Kelly's been here for the duration. Uh, I got to step in today with, you know, what is really one of our favorite shows. We, we'll cover about 50 events on theCUBE this year, and I got to say, um, Splunk show is one of our favorites because we get so many practitioners on. We get people that are actually, actually we had a couple of people today that are still kind of kicking the tires a little bit, getting their toe in the water, to people that have implemented stuff, to people that have really started down the journey and really progressed uh, down the journey a little ways to, to people that have been coming for, for, for years. So another great day, ton of great interviews. It'll all be online, obviously. You can watch them if you miss them live. So Jeff, what do you think? You, I know you're, uh, you're about Splunk, that we need to Splunk Jeff here, because I think he's uh, running out of steam. No, I was rare to go. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm upset we don't have more uh, segments to do today. I, I, know, could, I, think, I could go for another five I think hours. It's, I think it's three days next, next year. We're going to go for three I days. I agree, we could, we could absolutely pack in another day. There's no question about it. Um, look, you know, my take on the show is, you know, the, what I came in here wanting to, to see was, number one was kind of the enthusiasm of the, of the attendees. Was it going to match the level of last year? Because last year was uh, pretty incredible. And I'd say it matched it and, and then some. Um, just the number of attendees increased significantly. Uh, obviously, we're in a new venue this year. They had to expand, uh, they had to go to a venue that could accommodate more people. But, you know, the energy is still there. Um, and again, the, the, one of the best ways to judge the traction of any, any, any software company, uh, any technology company really is, can they produce customers that are willing to talk <laughs> about how they're using the tools, using the solutions for, for delivering business value? Um, and they did that, and they do that every year, and they're consistent in that. And I think that speaks a lot to um, you know, why they're so successful. They've built a, a, not just an application, but a platform that people are driving real business value with. And then in, in this big data space you know, that I cover every day, one of the challenges we've seen is, well, where are all the applications? Because ultimately, that's where the, the value is going to be delivered. There's a lot of innovation going on in the infrastructure and the plumbing level, and that's critical. It's a critical enabler. Things around Hadoop and you know, SQL databases and uh, SQL on Hadoop, et cetera, et cetera. And that stuff is all very important. In fact, you couldn't have a lot of the um, you, you, you wouldn't see the application certainly without that foundational level layer. But the question is always, well, where is the business value being driven? Right. And it's up to stack at the application level. And Splunk's one of the very few companies that can say, you know, we're, we're doing this uh, for real in production with real customers across a number of vertical industries. Um, we had on healthcare, um, transportation, uh, retail. So you, you name it and they're covering it. So, yeah, I mean, there's not much you, negative you can say about Splunk. They're doing a great job. I think the biggest challenge for them going forward, we touched on it a little bit in the previous segment. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, Sanjay from Cisco brought up is they're going to have to shift from, you know, that IT buyer to the business buyer. Uh, if they're really going to expand and go, uh, you know, put this into overdrive. Um, there's a, huge, a much bigger potential uh, customer base if you, if, if you can open up um, the line of business buyer. Um, and... and I'd say they're in a position to do that because of the, the outcomes that they can talk about in, in business terms, not technical terms, right. uh, but they still have to execute. Right. And they still have to, to make, that, make that shift. So that's one of their challenges. And then of course, when you scale, uh, when you're scaling as fast as Splunk is doing, this is a similar challenge that the company Tableau has, a, a company whose show we did fairly recently, about a month ago. Um, for a company like Splunk and like Tableau, they're very well known for their customer service and their fanatical focus on the customer. Um, as you scale, there's always that risk that you're going to lose that focus. So they've got to maintain that focus as well. I think they clearly have it now. Um, it'll be interesting to see over the next 12 months how that um, holds up. But, you know, really, great show. Love doing this show because you just get so much, such great content. I hope the audience enjoyed it. A lot of good stuff. Yeah, and they really touch on so many, so many trends that we cover at all the shows that we go to. And I'm curious to get your insight because, you know, they play with Hadoop. They play with AWS. They play in the cloud. They play on prem. Um, with Mint now, they're increasing their their mobile um, activity. So, 
and they're doing analytics, right, and big data, and, and really hardcore big data with unstructured data, structured data, uh, mainframe data, machine to machine data. Um, you know, we see and you cover a lot of little parts of that puzzle, but I don't know that there's someone who kind of embraces all of those things mm -hmm. um, so universally. I would tend to agree with that. I mean, I think, as I mentioned, look, the, the, the foundational layer, the infrastructure layer is critical as this thing scales out. And, um, you know, and, and to be clear, Splunk is not positioned as a kind of a storage layer. They're not for large scale storage. They're not for bringing in, dumping in all your data from 10 years worth of, you know, log data and customer data. You know, that's not their role. Their role is to provide operational analytics on fairly, quote unquote, hot data, data that's relatively new. Um, so there's a lot of other parts that are important to this ecosystem. Um, but again, as you move up the stack, you get closer and closer to the, to the business value. And it gets much easier to tell the story as you get higher up the stack. It's very difficult to translate how MapReduce is going to uh, create business value. That, that's right. a tough story to tell. Not that it doesn't happen, but that's a, that's a marketing challenge for sure. Right. But right. It's, it's much easier to say, well, we have an application um, that's going to allow you to increase efficiency by X percent on your trains, right. and that's going to save you millions of dollars on fuel costs. Right, right. A business person gets that. Now, under the covers, you know, whether it's Splunk or someone else, you know, there, there's all these enabling technologies, and there's Hadoop and MapReduce that might be doing its thing, but it's much easier once you get to the top of that stack to explain the business value, and that's one of the things that, you know, I, I, it's interesting that, that Splunk has you know, picked this space. You know, I think the founders are very astute and realize that it's going to be the, the application that's going to be critical. And, and then, of course, you know, modeling their search functionality around Google, you know, can't lose there. So you know, it's, again, it's hard to find faults. Um, Splunk's doing a great job and looking forward to being back next year and seeing uh, what their customers are up to by them. Yeah, some of the other uh, potential gotchas that came up um, on the analyst call that we listened to a little earlier is, you know, it takes a long time to get their salespeople up to speed. I think they, it's uh, about a year before they figure their, their salespeople are what they call tenured and really producing uh, revenue at a good rate because it's not an easy sale and there's so many solutions. Um, clearly, they had a great quarter last quarter, $100 million quarter for the first time, which was a breakthrough quarter for them. But uh, their net income you know, at the bottom is, is, is not much. Uh, if any, are slightly negative. But, you know, everyone talks about the fact they've got terrific gross margins at the top line, but they're investing heavily, they're growing. Yep. And, and I think one of the guests said, you know, when's Amazon going to make a profit too? So, you well. know, huge <laughs> opportunity just in terms of investing um, in this, you know, in, in the market opportunity that they see mm -hmm. um, as being so big and so vast, and, and you see that in their R&D efforts having all these applications across all these different platforms. Well, look, when you're a, a growing company like Splunk, you, know, you, you want to take advantage of this, this. This opportunity doesn't come around every day. When you're in this growth phase, you've got to take advantage of it. So you know, while you know, they're on track to do $420 million plus in revenue this year, I'm quite confident that, that their goal is not to be a, a $500 uh, million dollar company. They want to be a multi, multi-billion dollar company. And in order to do that, you've got to, you've got to gain uh, you know, massive uh, adoption. So, you know, they're in that mode right now. They're doing things like lowering prices for their cloud solution. They're increasing the amount of data you can uh, bring into uh, entry-level environments. They're trying to make it easier for people to get started with Splunk, expand that footprint. And, you know, as this company matures, then they can ratchet up the revenue and, uh, excuse me, ratchet up the, um, the profit by maybe scaling back a little bit on, uh, you know, what they're funneling back into the business for R&D. Now, of course, it's a delicate balance because they've got to continue to innovate. There's plenty of, plenty of companies out there that are going to be nipping at their heels. Um, you know, startups that are seeing what Splunk is doing and saying, well, we can do that and we can do it better, so we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go after that market. And then you're going to have on the other side the big players, IBMs of the world, they're not going to just sit back and let Splunk take this market. So it's going to be extremely competitive. I mean, we've sized this big data market. It's going to be $50 billion plus market by 2017. That means there's a lot of companies that right. want their piece of that. So they're going to have plenty of competition. Right. So they have to be careful how they balance, you know, the responding to investor pressure to deliver profit and pumping revenue back into the company to continue the innovation. So it's not easy. And that's, that's one of the, that's one of the, the tricks of, of growing a company is when do you take your foot off the gas pedal a little bit? Um, I don't have an answer. Yeah, it's not it's, happening here. It's, I would say this. <laughs> I would say at the very least, it's not now. They've got to continue to scale this thing. Yeah. So, um, the question is when, uh, and we'll see. And, and a lot of it will be based on, I think, 
to some degree, they probably won't want to say this because they want to, it'll spunk like any good solid company is going to say, we respond to our customers first and foremost. And that's true. But it'll be interesting if the pressure starts ratcheting up from Wall Street and from investors to return more of a profit and return right. more of that money to the shareholders. Right. We'll see how they respond. Right. But right now, I think shareholders understand or getting better understanding of Splunk. We've talked the course of the last two days how it is a bit of a challenging story for Wall Street to kind of get their arms around Splunk and what they do because they're are they apps company, are they a platform company? But I think they're starting to get it. Um, and smart investors will, who are in this for the long term un understand that now is the time to invest in growth, right. not the scale back. Yeah, and, 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 and Jeff Bezos has been doing that for decades now, right? Kind of basically running the company as, as he wants to run it. So I, I just wanted to capture a couple of quotes. I think we did, I don't know how many interviews we did over the last couple days, 25, 30 interviews, but there's some, I think there's some interesting quotes that kind of sum up some of the big themes. Um, one of them was from Godfrey Sullivan, the CEO, during the keynote, really talking about security as an analytics challenge, not a monitoring challenge. Mm -hmm. Really a different way in baking security into everything you do. Uh, Guido had a great quote about, you know, store first, schema on read, flexible analytics at top, at scale. Which I thought was really a powerful statement, as opposed to figure out your schema, then load the data, then run the analytics. So really flipping everything kind of on its head. Uh, Shanai Antani from GE, phenomenal in the keynote. I think the, the best part of his, his uh, talk was really about defined outcomes. What are you doing things for? Are you doing it so that you can deliver more value to your customers? And if you're not, don't do it. And really being iterative in, in what you do as a company and how you deliver, thinking customer first as opposed to product first or feature first. Uh, Lena Joshi, great guest, uh, one of our women in tech, featured um, gals, really had the great bumper sticker, I think. Always start with the data. And she was very clear, she's managing a huge portfolio of products along a number of, uh, of uh, delivery methodologies, but always start with the data. Uh, Devani Lamas, you know, we, we see more and more focus on front end UI design and making it easier for customers to deal with your applications. And really her, her uh, great quote I thought was combining human insight and intuition and powerful computing power. Really leveraging what computers can do and what computers can do well. And really that's some of that automated uh, pattern recognition that they put into the 6.2 release. Mark Graff, the security keynote, you got to watch it. Uh, again, he had a really great quote at the end, especially if you have anyone in your family that was in World War II, it will speak to you directly, and I'll just leave it at that. Um, and then finally, I think a theme that we've heard, well, let me go back one more. Jim Nichols, I think, was terrific when he told us that his biggest Splunk user is a customer service agent with a liberal arts background. I mean, that's got to be music to Splunk's ears in terms of that person learning the tool, recognizing the opportunity, applying their knowledge and their objectives to really create a new dashboard and a new way to use Splunk that no one had else designed in the company. I thought that was pretty powerful. And then finally, Aaron Fulkerson, um, in three words, really this evolution of data and going from reactive to proactive to predictive. And really that being kind of the holy grail is to get out to that predictive and in an SLA business, as he described, being able to solve problems before the customer even knows they exist and leveraging that predictive. So those are just some of my, my highlights. All that's embedded in the videos. We'll have all the videos um, and the interviews tagged up shortly, but uh, those are some of my, my great takeaways. I'll leave it to you to close us out, Jeff. Well, you know, great show. Really enjoyed it. It's always fun coming to .conf. Um, looking forward to be, being back again next year. I wonder if we'll be here or if we'll have to expand even further. I think yeah, MGM's I almost as big as it gets, right? So. Well, there's Moscone and, and, uh, and what goes on there. So, or there's well, always the Las Vegas Convention Center where the Consumer Electronics Show that's is. That's true. So you can still get a little bit bigger. Yeah. So that's it. We are out. We're wrapping up two days of day to day, two days of wall to wall coverage here at Splunk.conf. We're the last guys here. They're cleaning up in the corner. We're closing down the place like we like to do. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll be uh, check uh, SiliconAngle.tv for our upcoming events where we're going. Busy season, busy year. Um, also, you can find all of the uh, interviews there. Go to wikibon.org for the uh, Wikibon uh, uh, analysis, research. We're tired. Jeff's got some great stuff up there on, on big data that you definitely got to see. And of course, siliconangle.com for the latest tech news. I'm Jeff Rick, signing off with Jeff Kelly from Splunk.conf. You're watching theCUBE. Keep it tuned in. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.